Hey all, I am BK, and uh, welcome to this Thinly Veiled uh, promo video for my Twitch streaming that I recently started doing. The actual meat of this video is going to be a review of the recent EP, Career Suicide, by Triple Kill and Orpheus Omega. Um, I think that they advertise it as by Orpheus Omega and Triple Kill, but I like to think of it as TKOO, because it's like, TKO! Oh. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, it is a collaboration uh, by those two bands. Uh, both of them are Melbourne metal bands that I have friends in, so... It'd be really awkward if I didn't like the EP, hey? Hey buds, I made a video about your new release. It sucks. No, it doesn't suck. Yeah, so it's a bunch of metal covers, or like relatively heavy covers of uh, pop-punk classics from yesteryear. I should mention that Twitch saw this first, um, alongside a few uh, other recent genre non-specific music releases uh, pretty much every week, every Monday uh, afternoon or evening depending I'm gonna be checking out a bunch of new releases that came out in the week or couple weeks prior uh, just kind of like a big old listening party so Career Suicide was a uh, part of last week's lineup of new releases so follow me there there will be links as there always are. I should mention I was not asked to make this video. Um, I bought the EP of my own accord. I They don't know that I'm making it. I don't like being told to make videos about anything. I don't mind video suggestions, but I don't like people being like, hey, view my album. Because I've had a few people do that. Not people I know personally, but like random people online are like, oh, I see you do reviews, which I understand. I just, I don't want to be told what to review, I want to just be interested in reviewing it, you know what I mean? I don't want to be asked to do a review and then maybe hate it but already have said that I was going to do it and then have to put up a video of me not liking it when the band would suffer financially from an opinion like that, like if the band isn't like super super established. So that's a lot of stuff I didn't need to say and has made this video a lot longer. Anyway, anyway, yes, that's a really long-winded way of me saying uh, I did not be asked to make this fucking video. Yes, so a little info dump about uh, the Career Suicide EP. Well, I've already told you it's a metal, like, a uh, metal-heavy uh, covers album of pop-punk uh, classic uh, hits from uh, a long time ago. How long ago was it? Over a decade at least. Maybe two decades. Uh, it's six tracks. Um, this is the EP that I bought uh, from... They're both selling it. I got it from Triple Kill, I think, this one. Yep. Cool little cardboard thing. It says in here just a bunch of information about like who performed it, who did the illustrations, like where they were recorded and mixed and mastered and who did all that. Look at this album art, by the way. How cool is that? Holy shit, I look so creepy, look at me. So the songs are Stacy's Mum, uh, All the Small Things, Skater Boy, Basket Case, Misery Business, and Prisoner of Society. You'd be hard pressed to find people that don't know these songs, at least from like the radio. A couple of these bands I was quite into when I was a teenager, a very early teen, maybe around 13. Like Green Day and Blink-182 and Avril Lavigne, I was quite into those guys. Um, I actually had Avril Lavigne as my first ever profile photo on Facebook when I was like 13. So, there's part of my cringe pre-metal and goth awareness phase. No, it's not cringe. Guilty pleasures are bullshit, okay? Do I listen to much of these anymore? No, but I did at one point, so I've got to respect that. I love the artwork. I think Tristan Tate Illustrations is who did that. Apparently the back though, I have it on good authority from one of my friends in the band, uh, Orpheus, um, that he like drew the back. I think he said he drew it specifically. And so yeah, apparently they wanted to have like this very like high school doodle vibe uh, about it because it's such a nostalgic kind of album to do. Uh, at least for people in a certain age bracket. I will get into my initial thoughts after that uh, stream and they were that 
seeing these two bands do a covers album, I wasn't shocked about Triple Kill, but I was worried about Orpheus. Truth be told, I, I don't know their entire discography that well. I think I've probably heard more Triple Kill than I've heard Orpheus, even though Orpheus are more successful and have been around longer and all that. Don't be mad! Don't be mad at me! Fuck you! So I was yeah not shocked that Triple Kill was interested in doing something like this. Done a bunch of covers before and they're very, very good at them. I think that they do a cover pretty much every time they play live. I once saw them shake a packed out massive venue to its core performing uh, System of a Down's Sigaro. Uh, um, not Sigaro, Sigaro. I can't really speak. They do covers really fucking well. I was expecting them to kind of get overshadow Orpheus, honestly, on this album. However, Orpheus had none of that. Um, they did not allow themselves to be overshadowed in this um, EP. Um, their rendition of one of the songs, I was like, wow, nicely done. There is footage of me boogieing on stream uh, to a few of the songs. We can hang around by the if not all of them. This is a very fun album, a very nostalgic album. I really liked the uh, community reference uh, in the music videos because two of the songs had music videos made to them. Those songs being the first two on the EP, um, Stacey's Mom and All the Small Things. The way that they've gone about it, by the way, is Triple Kill, Orpheus, Triple Kill, Orpheus, Triple Kill, Orpheus. So they've swapped over each song. Yeah, so first two songs on the album, um, All the Small Things and Stacey's Mom, are they have music videos that you can watch here on YouTube and I will link them obviously. They have like, they do a bit at the start of it, very uh, 12 foot ninja style. Again, not surprising, triple kill I've seen. Um, they often do skits as a part of their music videos, uh, but they also do like, they kind of do a joint skit that's the same for the start of both music videos. And they do a community reference, which is awesome. Uh, unless the community reference itself was a reference to something else. You know that bottle episode, uh, the alternate timelines one? Anyway, watch the fucking music video, you'll get it. Very on point and very on brand for these motherfuckers. There was mad effort uh, evidently put into uh, both of the respective videos. Obvious, uh, Auntie Donna, um, inspira uh, inspiration. So Auntie Donna and 12 Foot Ninja, clear, clear, um, Inspiration. Uh, fun fact, I was in a Triple Kill music video once, uh, a few years ago, for like, a frame or two. Yes! Can't really recognise me though, because I, on the drive there, I like, it was too bumpy, so I couldn't actually do my makeup. I, I, like, we were running late and I had to do my makeup on the way there and I didn't end up, like, doing most of it. So, I'm not very recognisable. For people who haven't seen me wearing makeup, which at this point I've worn enough no makeup in videos on YouTube that you guys should probably know what I look like without it anyway. Anyway! Uh, the ending of the music videos, by the way, have an homage to um, the long-term and founding member uh, Joao leaving Orpheus, which is the big sads. My heart breaks. And yeah, so long-term guitarist of the band, founding member alongside uh, the Melbro, um, Chris, the Melbro, sorry, both the Melbros are in the band, I should really say which one I'm talking about. Happy birthday, by the way, Joao, for Friday, which was by the time this is uploaded a few days ago, but still, if you watch this, I don't know who watches my fucking videos when it comes to bands. I know some people do, I don't know who they are. I don't know who they are until they tell me though, so I just like to assume nobody does <laughs> until they tell me and I'm very awkward about it because I'm like, ah. Oh. Cool. I have to just actually make this video instead of talking a bunch of shit, right? That said, uh, replacing Joao in Orpheus is Luke Ashley. Melbourne metal people would know him from Trigger or Tunes TV. Trigger being the band, Tunes TV being the streamers slash DJs slash YouTubers. I'm pretty sure they have a channel too. 
uh, both Tunes guys are in Triple Kill and Orpheus, respectively. It's all very incestuous. However, um, there isn't at all uh, unwarranted nepotism at play here. The dudes are all phenomenal at their instruments and happen to know each other. And that's just kind of how it happens in the scenes, hey? Proper thoughts after a few listens, we'll go song by song, are uh, the Fountains of Wayne Stacy's Mom song, covered by Triple Kill. found that really, really fun. However, during the chorus, I did find it went a little too fast for my liking. Um, kind of took me out of the song, or didn't really let, like, let me get into the chorus as much as I would have liked to. I don't know if it was to kind of make it fit with the solo that they did better, but um, yeah, I feel like it would have served the song pretty well not to be so rushed. However, still enjoyed it. Obviously, this is all just my opinion. I'm not getting super technical about anything or analytical about anything. Just, I re-listened to this while I was having a shower earlier today and wrote notes after I got out of it. All the Small Things uh, cover, the Blink-182 cover um, by Orpheus, I felt that the Thamelbros shined really, really well here. Uh, Chris's emo vocals were surprisingly impressive. Uh, Matt's uh, drum shenanigans uh, were equally so. Avril Lavigne's Skater Boy, uh, covered by Triple Kill, really, really fun, and I know I keep saying things were fun, but it's because they are. That's like the fucking nature of this genre. So fuck off. It is. Sorry, I'm sitting on my feet. I'm hurting. The vocal harmonies that they used uh, throughout kind of wigged me out, and I wasn't sure if I was on the side of liking them or hating them. However, I did end up falling on the side of liking them. It absolutely, like, held my attention. Like, it got me to my attention throughout the songs really well. Um, I think that like they just took it in a really interesting kind of direction, like some of the artistic choices that they made uh, musically were just... I, I liked what they changed and how they went about it for that track. For uh, Green Day's Basket Case, uh, covered by Orpheus, I think this was where I was like, oh, they're not being overshadowed by Triple Kill. It was... Like, Triple Kill don't fuck around when it comes to covers, but dude, this was probably my favourite song off the EP, not gonna lie. I think that they captured the spirit of the song really well, maybe not to perfection, but doing covers albums is so risky, and I think that I'd honestly be happy going either way seeing Green Day or Orpheus perform this live. Uh, bold claim, but yeah. Next is uh, Paramore's Misery Business. Rodney's vocals lend themselves so well to this cover. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know much about Paramore uh, outside of Twilight and I feel like Guitar Hero, uh, but they made me uh, quite enjoy the song and yeah, I found it really fun. I'm sorry I keep saying that, but I'm gonna keep saying it. Mm. Uh, last but not least, um, The Living End's Prisoner of Society. Honestly, I cannot hear The Living End without thinking about my cousin Nicole. She fucking loves The Living End. There have been many a time that she has driven me around when I was a teenager, um, when we've been hanging out and she would be playing them. Or oh, Green Day, actually. A lot of these bands she was quite into. Or is. She's not, you know deceased or anything. I just haven't seen her in a long time because she's in Brisbane and there's no going anywhere right now. I never got super super about them myself. However, I did get right amongst this cover of um, Prisoner of Society and the fucking keys that Owen chucks in, by the way, during the fucking cover. Choice. Very, very good choice. Every single solo in each track, by the way, um, was fucking amazing and uh, worthy self-indulgent demonstration of their um, uh, mu musical ability. The musicianship that each of these bands have are really, really evident and if you see them live or have seen them recorded, then you know what I'm talking about. My favourite tracks... I, I had four and I've whittled it down to three. Skater Boy, Basket Case, and Prisoner of Society. Top would be Basket Case for me. I just, it was so good as a cover. I really, really enjoyed it. Smashed favorite for me. Obviously, Triple Kill still owned 
the fuck out of this EP just as much as Obvious did. Uh, just favorite track was an Obvious one. If I had to rate it, um, I don't always like covers albums. I don't think that they're usually done very well, but I think for a covers album, this was done pretty well. So I'm going to give it a 6.69 or a 6.99. Because nice. <laughs> now, probably about a 7 out of 10. Uh, not the best covers album I've heard, not the best covers of these songs that I've ever heard, um, but covers are fucking not easy to make good. Uh, most covers albums fucking suck. Most covers bands fucking suck. Don't come at me. They just do. Most songs sound best as their original renditions. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. There are obvious exceptions. Uh, if you'd like me to do a video on uh, songs that, I, in my opinion, were better covered than they were original, I'm happy to do that. Anyway, we are just about at the end of the video now. Um, links to the EP will be in the description. They are limited. I don't think that they have many more left. Um, but try your luck with either band uh, to see if you can grab a copy. Um, I think that it's worth the money. I do intend on playing using the CD to play music at clubs uh, because I love all covers of random stuff. Uh, playing them at metal clubs or buff clubs, whichever one I'm doing. Absolutely worth at least a listen on Spotify. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's available on Spotify and Bandcamp and all that kind of stuff. So yes, uh, links to the EP uh, will be in the description. Uh, like, share and subscribe to this video if you want to. I don't know why you would. I mean, I know why you'd maybe like it or subscribe to me if you like me. Um, what else is there to say? Yeah, follow me on Twitch. Uh, obviously, this is meant to be <laughs> meant to be me talking about the fact that I'm starting Twitch now. Follow me on Twitch. Uh, Varunya Khan, same as here. Next Monday, we're sussing out new releases from uh, Danheim, Equilibrium, Zanius, Active Denial, Traitors, Vader, Bootblacks. It's gonna be a really long stream. That'll be Monday afternoon. I'm hoping to get this out today which is Sunday, so hopefully tomorrow I'll see you if you're watching this the day that I publish it. Too much talking. Gonna run out of that thing. I hope that you like the video. Do you like this, um, setup? This is, like, similar to my stream- my, uh, Twitch streaming one. But I think I like it better than the other one that I do. Hmm. Twitch.